Hello, Trick is the name, and you know what? Let's talk about some anime. So, this is my third time doing this kind of reaction of like what I thought about the previous seasonal and what I'm going to talk about with the upcoming seasonal anime. And you know what? I had a lot of fun doing it. I experienced a lot of really cool anime from doing this, so I'm, I want to keep doing it. For those who don't know, I pretty much sum up and kind of give a little tiny like review of last seasonal anime that is wrapping up right now and my thoughts on some of the anime I watched. And then also I go sum up on some of the really cool anime that will be coming out very soon and which ones I'm probably going to be watching for you guys. So sit tight, relax, and yeah, let's get right into summer 2021 seasonal recap. So let's get started into like the big three that actually was really popular. And the first one I'm going to is the Reincarnation of the Slime Season 2 Part 2, which you know what? I love freaking like reincarnation of slime. It actually has now become one of my favorite, and probably the favorite Isekai anime of all time. And there's a lot of Isekai animes out there, and this is definitely one of my favorites. Like the action, the characters, the story. I'm like really into it, and I'm even like thinking about like pick up the manga for it because I heard that there's a lot of like missing pieces that didn't actually go into the anime, which I kind of want to get into. Like it looks really cool, and it's shaping up pretty awesomely. I'm really getting. In fact, I even got my own little Rimuru. You know, it's a little squishy Rimuru. Ah, I love it so much. That's why I have this little guy. It also is gonna stop. I mean, come on, you gotta have your own freaking Rimuru. Why not? But yeah, I, it's still great. I still love it. And you know what? It's still ending off a pretty good note. So if you guys haven't watched it, definitely watch it. Catch up on it because it's definitely really good anime to get into. Then, of course, one of my top favorite animes of all time also had its second season, and that was Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. I don't know what that means, really, but it was great. It actually got into more of the backstories of some of the characters and got into a lot more amazing animation. I love that, like, in the beginning, everyone was saying, like, this is what it looks like when the actual animators get paid well. I know they still got paid well, but I just love all the work they put into it. It's amazing. I think anyone should watch it out. It just, it's such really well made animation art, story, characters, all wrapped in one. It's like, if I could recommend someone an anime if they do not know if they're gonna like anime or not, that like, they might like anime, like they like the basic like Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon, and they wanna get into the other stuff, this is definitely something I would highly recommend anyone to get into if they're kinda on the border, if they're gonna like anime. Okay, now to get into some of the other ones. Um, so, Detective is already dead um, anime. Now, I really was looking forward to this because I love mystery kind of anime and I love just mystery drama like one of my favorite is just Sherlock Holmes stories I just love the games and the TV shows and all that kind of fun stuff and I was really disappointed in this one I know like it just seemed kind of weird like I think the first episode was just like really cool and interesting but then <laughs> you find out very soon like the whole detective thing the whole detective is dead is like spoilers is the girl with the white hair you know you kind of it's not really spoilers because it's the first episode but yeah she's the most interesting character in the entire series and she dies in the first episode so I was like oh well you killed off your most beloved character what the trick and like they do go like kind of like a flashback scenes and to more of her kind of style and her like story and there's some those parts are like, kind of fun and stuff but I kind of like there was like supernatural and aliens and this is some weird things going on and it was just so convoluted and I know I couldn't catch some of the mysteries they were going for so I just kind of got lost I, I I only watched up to like episode six and I kind of just went off on it I don't know if you guys want to enjoy it definitely check it out and if it's worth getting into again uh, let me know I'll totally try to give another chance but I don't know girlfriend girlfriend <laughs> so um this is the absolute definition of just turn off your brain anime it's not really that great but it has nice visuals the characters are unique and kind of likable I don't know like it doesn't make sense it really hunched and doesn't make sense but it's not really supposed to make sense so I'm kind of like oh okay well you know what it's it's fine it's whatever uh, it has really nice visuals and really good music and like I know I just thought it was fun you know it's kind of one of those kind of things that you just like um, long days at work don't want to think about anything just pop in this anime and just enjoy it and that's kind of what it is it's like not the best but if you have some time to kill definitely try it 
remake our life like it's one of those kind of things that like there's a lot of isekais out there that doesn't need to be an isekai like literally the only thing about this was that like this guy instead of him actually like pursuing a goal of his of being like a like a film director and whatever he went in and did something that was like more profitable and and near the end he just was really regretted it and didn't like it and out of nowhere he just goes back in time to the part where he had the choice between either making a lot of money or doing film school and decided to try film school and you know what it worked out for him you know he found he found all these girls and and people like him and stuff but I, I don't know I, I kind of got away from this one too like I, the visuals were pretty cool I really like the girl with the blue hair she was actually super adorable and that's what I like about it and I do like that there was a little bit of chemistry romance with it um I kind of wanted to just watch for that but whenever they got into the movie part and like the actual like behind the scenes of how things are made I kind of lost interest like again I was never really into movies so like this didn't really appeal to me but I think if you're into any kind of like movie industry movie making or anything like that this is actually be a good one to go for just get the part that is an East Kai because really after that first part is just doesn't really show any easy Kai parts that he really needs like I really think it shouldn't have been East Kai in the first place in my opinion how a realistic hero rebuilt the kingdom. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I couldn't get past the first episode. It was so boring. Like, I know, like, this kind of makes me want to enjoy isekais a little bit more because, again, like, the whole point of isekais is that it's fantasy, you know, how one person interacts with the fantasy world, and all that kind of stuff, that. And, you no, know, there's some interesting moments for that. But, like, tell you the truth, this one just was boring, you know? Like this guy just gets reincarnated into this fantasy world and right off the bat he just starts to do economics and trying to do everything logically which i guess is cool like if you're into that kind of stuff but like of all the isekais i've watched this is definitely the most boring like if it's down if you like the and a realistic way of someone being able to fix a fantasy world Go for it, but I mean, I was really bored of this anime. I'm sorry. If this is one of your favorites, I do apologize. Maybe you guys convinced me in the comments below of it being a really good anime to go into, but to me, I think I can skip this one 100%. Spirit Chronicles. I was into it in the beginning, and then I fell off. Like, I want to say I got to like at least like episode like 8, I think, maybe. Um, and then it just became a stereotypical isekai kind of thing and again it's one of those kind of isekai like fantasies where it didn't really feel like an isekai at all like like he was isekai like he was like okay so the whole summary of it is that he's a boy and it just found out out of nowhere like oh hey i was an isekai character i was a real person back in the day and then he's just like continuing on his way and nothing really changed until he made this one girl who was also somehow isekai too and that never changed either it just like i don't know like again it's one of those kind of isekais that literally did not be an isekai it could just been a fantasy i think they just put the whole isekai trope on there because it's a popular thing but it was also just very boring fantasy he's this overpowered kid who was so nice and all the girls loved him and i don't know it was, it was totally a basic isekai trash if you like those kind of things definitely check it out me i've seen enough of these that i kind of got the gist after episode three i still watched it until like episode eight or nine i can't remember but after that i kind of was like uh, 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 the moonlight fantasy this was a cool one i actually like this i really just like the two girls i like the little, the spider chick and the dragon i think they're actually cool i still don't really understand the fact that the, this isekai guy like even though it finds them attractive didn't want to do anything with them even though they really want to do with them like they, they saw him as family i'm like what the frick how do you see them as family i know whatever is isekai magic or whatever but i actually like this one i actually like that it was actually an isekai because it actually makes sense apparently like he was his family was an isekai and now he was forced to be isekai and now he's trying to get back to his home which is actually cool because a lot of East Kai people just want to stay where they are because they hate their lives he actually enjoys his life and now he wants to go back to see his family which is cool I actually really like that I think it's hilarious that he's like ugly even though he looks just like everyone else 
pretty much every other isekai protagonist he looks just like everyone else um but i do like the fact that he is getting stronger he's getting more powerful i don't really understand it but again i'm gonna chop it up with just isekai magic but i know i enjoyed it i think this is probably one of the best of all the new isekais that came out that i actually fell in love with um, I'm not going to say it's up there with the reincarnation of slime, but you know, I would definitely like to watch it if it comes out with another season. Great Jahi will not be defeated. This one is a lot of fun. <laughs> I really do enjoy it. I do have a lot of questions. Like the girl, very attractive, very cute, very like tsundere, and I think she's really fun and I wouldn't mind getting into like more of the seasons if they do release them. But like again, like I guess she just has so much pride but like I just have so many questions. Like uh, there's a servant who like really like devotes entire life to like the little girl and he, she's like super successful somehow, I don't know how but she's like super successful and she gets all these like power gems is what this uh, girl is trying to find to get her power back so she can retake the kingdom. And instead of like Brim was just forcing this old servant to give me all the stuff, she just doesn't want to ask because she feels like you know like she's too high up there. I, I don't really understand that part. It's kind of weird. But other than that, it's just a really cool, adorable anime that's just loved to fun. And I wouldn't mind just keep watching it. Like I, it did start a little bit later in the actual like seasonal part of the month, but I definitely enjoyed what I'm watching, and I hopefully I get to see more of it. I won't say that she's like the most attractive of all the like manga stuff that has been coming out, but at least she's pretty cute. The adult form, the adult form, not the kid form. Obviously. The Duke of Death and his Maid. This one is my gemstone of the seasonal anime that came out. I love this one. It's such an amazing romance story. Like I'm I'm a huge sucker for romance and like those kind of like love stories and I think this one's a, such an amazing one. It's about this guy who literally got cursed at a young age by which anything he touches dies and he was disowned by his family and no one wants to see him and he like went crazy and kind of stuff like that but then after like meeting this girl who like pretty much like loves this guy from a young age um, he has now a new reason to live and he wants to like solve this curse and like get it removed and like that and she's just always there to support him and I just love all the little banter they have with each other it just it's such a sweet sweet anime and this is one that I definitely recommend for anyone who loves like romance kind of stuff like that I think this is really really nice um, the animation is kind of weird it's kind of the same style as Berserk which we all know how that goes but I think for it not being very like violent or like gory and stuff like that. I think it pulls it off very well with the 3D animation style. And I do think it's just amazing love story between two characters. And I love the whole idea that this guy can't touch the person he loves, but he wants to because he loves him so much. Ah, I just think that's a really sad, depressing love story. And I think that's actually really nice. I would love to see what happens next. If it ends and we do not know what happens next, I'm 100% going to get the manga. 100%. Peach Boy Riverside. Now this one was a confusing one because of course this was actually supposed to go for the whole Momotaro story. That's a very famous Japanese story that happened. And I was really confused about it in the beginning. And like I think it was super weird how they did it because they they arranged the actual episode so weirdly because in the beginning it was just like them like killing people and all the kinds of that and things going crazy and then in the middle of the actual see like a like anime series um they kind of went backwards and did flashbacks of like how everyone came where they were you know the girl had some kind of power with with the peach boy guy and like he took his like, and the peach boy guy wasn't even the original momotaro and he's he was a demon actually but then took his soul of momotaro now he just wants to kill the freaking oni and like the girl cut her hair but she wants to be independent and explore like i know it just it got really convoluted and i kind of just went away from it it just became way too much it was so confusing like yeah it was very bloody and gory but really i don't know I couldn't get into it. Maybe if I stuck to it a little bit longer, maybe I would understand it and love it. But I got pretty far with it, and I just kind of gave up on it. I don't know. I'm I'm sorry. Like there was a lot of anime for me to watch, and I had to drop some of them to have time to try out the other ones. And I'm glad I did. Cause I was able to experience a lot of really cool ones. But if you really like violent blood gore. Just know that it gets real confusing near the midway beginning part, and probably fix itself at the end. But 
let me know. And the last one I want to talk about is the Cheat Pharmacist's slow life making a drugstore in another world. And I, I'm, I'm conflicted with this one, guys, because on one hand, it's stupid. Like another, again, one of those kind of things that it shouldn't be an isekai. It should just been a fantasy. And the guy, I just don't understand. Like he's like actually a pretty charming character. I actually like him a lot. I think he's actually kind of reminds me of like the Kona Super main character. You know, like I think he actually is really funny. But the thing is that he's a he's a pharmacist. That's all he kept on saying. He's a pharmacist. But he invented the most of crazy things that pharmacy like pharmacists wouldn't actually make you know like like i understand like you know hey make a drink for me so i can sleep well okay well i'm a pharmacist i can do that but then he makes like poisons and like ward off monster kind of things he made like beauty tonics and like a truth serum and like he made some weird stuff that like i just do not think is really pharmacist kind of like worthy he made like stuff that polishes armor like all this stuff like that he makes doesn't really make sense as a pharmacist he's, he's more of a venter than a pharmacist and i think that would be more interesting an inventor from the other world goes into a fantasy world that would have been cool but it just kind of was convoluted but i don't know i actually really loved all the characters in this the story didn't make sense the visuals can be like kind of grainy sometimes but the characters were really fun and interesting and there was even some little bit of romance to it too and i actually like whenever an anime actually fills in some like really cool romantic kind of aspects again Hope it's romantic over here. But I think you can definitely try it out and see see if I'm wrong. You know, maybe you actually think that it's actually a really good anime. I don't know. Again, it's another Isekai trash kind of stuff. So if you like that kind of stuff, go for it. If not, then you probably won't really interested in it too much. Okay, so that's my thoughts on the last previous seasonal. It, it was good, it was fine. I think really just like three or four actual animes that season actually carried the entire like seasonal. Um, so I actually did enjoy it overall and I did try out some really cool anime that I actually glad I actually did watch. But there's definitely some ones I probably could have gotten away with. But enough of that, let's get into the upcoming seasonal anime of fall of 2021. So let's get into the first part, one of the most popular ones, because it destroyed all the reviews last time it aired, I think earlier this year, and that is Jobless Reincarnation Part 2, which is actually really good. It was the father of all East Kai, so a lot of people was hyping it up, and you can actually see it. Like, it the animations were great, the characters were great, the story was great, the world was great, everything was really great about it. This was an isekai that made sense and is definitely up there with some of the greats. Like stuff like Reincarnation of the Slime, Sora Online, I don't know, like you can compare it if you want. I don't really care too much about that anime. But like it was definitely, it definitely deserves to be up there with the greats. And I would definitely give it a shot before the second season comes out. Definitely try and watch it. It is gory it is violent it has a lot of sexual stuff into it so if you're not a fan of horror and those kind of stuff i probably would stay away from it but if you're cool with that kind of stuff definitely check it out at least i know i'm gonna be checking out the second season of this one because oof, i can't wait to see what happens to the characters next and i am definitely one of those people i'm 100 one of those people komi can't communicate is coming to anime oh my god like i've been super into this like i've heard the rumors of all these people talking about how great coming can't communicate was and i actually went out and bought pretty much the entire volume i'm up to date with the volumes of amp of all the manga for it and it's actually really cool i'm really so excited that it's finally getting an anime imitation now like i started pretty late in the whole game like i've only been really looking forward to it for about a year or two a lot of people have been looking forward to it for many years down the line so like I can't vouch too much for it but let's just say I am super excited for this one this one looks really good and I'm so loving the art style the characters oh man like if you have not heard of Komi Can't Communicate definitely check this one out because this one will definitely get you into it Komi is definitely deserving of like best character now I want to say she's best waifu we'll see what the other characters come out for and I also, we're getting into the really crazy parts of the manga right now, so I'll, I hope they cover a lot of it. Don't know how much, but it'd be great if you see a lot of the characters come on there. But I will say that I could definitely see why Komi can be a, the best waifus for a lot of people. 
So this one's actually really hyped up also. It's called Blue Period. It looks really good. A lot of the animation is really awesome. The only reason why I don't know if I'm going to get into it too much is because it's mostly about art. And like, art is cool. Don't get me wrong. Art is really cool. I just don't know art. I don't really care too much about art. Like I tried drawing when I was a kid. And I just didn't really get into it too much. So I feel like it's one of those kind of stuff like remake life where it's definitely a really cool interesting story with characters but it definitely revolves around a certain like plot which is movie making for that one this one's be art making and i don't know i think that's kind of cool for other people to check it out i might still check it out maybe at least a couple of episodes and see if i can get grasp on it but i don't know this one might be on the bottom of my list of the most excitable but again i've heard it's really popular a lot of people really want to get it a shot so i'll give it a shot too Alright, I think I'm going to get this name wrong, but it's like mm, Mayuki, Mayuko-chan, Maruko-chan. Um, this one looks very interesting. So, like, the manga, it's all about, like, this girl who can see dead people. And it's really gruesome of some of the arts, like, that is shown in the manga. But this girl doesn't want to acknowledge it, because I feel like, I don't know, like, if, like, I know the story of it, but it kind of seems like if she acknowledges it, they will attack. So she's trying to do everything she can to not acknowledge these creepy, monstrous, like, ghostly, like, creatures that's all around her, and just seeing her reactions to it. And also, apparently, because she's the only one that sees it, whenever she hangs out with her friends, they all want like to do stuff with her and she just sees all these creepy characters like in the way. I don't know. I would love to see the reactions of all these different characters in this anime and I'll probably definitely go and watch it like crazy but I don't know hopefully it doesn't turn into like a really scary horror kind of anime because that's not really my jam but I'll definitely check it out it looks fun definitely gonna try it out but I don't know we'll see world's end harem <laughs> so um, apparently this one's gonna be on border of like in this species reviewer etchy because the whole premise of this is that um, a disease happened and it killed off like 99% of all the males in the world and there's only 5 males left in the entire world population and they are and pretty much their entire job is to pretty much repopulate and so all these really hot girls are just like hey me right me right so I don't know the premise seems very stupid, <laughs> in my opinion, but you know, it's, it's, it's probably going to be one of those turn off your brain kind of anime and just watch it of all the special fun parts of what's pretty much going to show. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to get into it too much, I know, I think it's going to be pretty dumb, but I'll, ch I'll definitely check it out for research for you guys to let you guys know if it's really good. That's why I'm going to watch it. Uh, obviously, that's the main reasons for research. For for you guys, I'm doing it for you guys. I'm, I'm going to tougher through this um, uh, uh, um, anime for you. Is it an anime actually? Um, well, I'll let you know. My senpai is annoying. <laughs> this one's also kind of seems like a U Uzaki chan kind of style, where it's uh, instead of a big booby girl annoying the main protagonist, is actually a little tiny lowly girl and like being annoying i think to the really big buff guy which i don't know like that doesn't seem like a thing for me like i personally don't think that's attractive a little girl the giant buff guy but it's a it's a humorous kind of funny edgy romance so like i think it'd be kind of fun i think it'd be really cool to get into it and i love like these kind of funny romances I love romances in general, so adding a little bit of humor to it, it just sounds perfect for me. So I'll get into it, I don't know how much I'll get into it, but the animation seems fun and I've heard it's pretty popular and some people go and get into it, so why not I try it? The Vampire Dies in No Time. I don't know really much about this one, but I've seen a lot of like high-end, like really good like anime watchers, like YouTubers and stuff like that. Um, kind of eyeing this one and want to check it out. It kind of reminds me of the Welcome to Demon School like style of anime, which I actually really enjoyed that one. So like if it's anything like that, I'll definitely enjoy it. But I'm going to try and stay away from the synopsis and maybe get into it blindly and I'll let you guys know what you think of it. Maybe it'll be a great one. I love checking out anime going in blind and then finding out I really like it. <laughs> it doesn't work all the time though. 
Apparently, it's actually going to be a season two of Way of the House Husband, which actually I really enjoyed it. It was like the animation was kind of eh for me, like they did it on purpose, but like I still was kind of eh on it. But I definitely enjoyed the humor and all the characters with it. Um, it says it's supposed to be airing on October seventh, and I know Netflix is notoriously terrible of like releasing things on time. I've always like looked forward to like different anime seasons and never see it until like years afterwards. But I don't know how accurate that would be or if it's gonna be on a different kind of platform. I thought it was a Netflix exclusive so maybe it will be a Netflix but I'll definitely check it out and let you guys know of it. It was fun when I watched it and I definitely binged it and enjoyed it a lot. I, of course it was in dub so I was able to watch it very quickly. But I'll definitely say if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out if you have Netflix. Cool, that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for the rest of it. Like, there's not much of it going on. There's some anime here and there that kind of looks interesting to me. I don't know if I'll get really into it. I'll try it out and dip into it and let you guys know when I do this episode again, talking about my recap of the fall. But I, for now, I'm gonna let it like this. Because last time, I surrounded and did so much anime that I had no time to do anything else. And I kind of had to drop a lot of it just because it was just too much. So this time, I'm going to to focus on the really popular ones, maybe dip my toes in some of the unlikely ones, and then I'll let you guys know what I think about it next time. But thank you guys for staying tuned for the entire video. You guys are freaking amazing. Hopefully, I get to see you guys next time I make this video, and hopefully, you guys can tell me in the comments below. What do you guys think of the last previous anime? Were some of your favorites? Some of them I did not check out. And this upcoming anime, are you guys super looking forward to some of the animes coming out? And is that an anime I should definitely check out that you want to recommend me? I'll definitely check it out if you recommend it for me. Till then, I hope you guys all have yourself a nice day and yeah, bye!